Now on 767 News. Government encourages diaspora investment at annual diaspora meeting. Ministry of Education says it is ready to host 2014 National Youth Rally. The results of an election poll suggest that the DLP government will be victorious in the upcoming elections. And in sports, WICB announces West Indies A50 over squad. I'm Alicia George and welcome to another 767 News Report. I trust that you had a wonderful day. When we return, we will bring you the latest developments and more. Stay with us. You have a sense of style. It's elegant. It's chic. It's modern. It's timeless. At Quartz, we have the widest range of furniture to suit any style. So you're sure to find something that's you. Furniture is fashionable only at Quartz. Bringing value home. When you serve your family Chocolisto, they'll be getting a tasty drink. That's good for them, they'll love the taste. So delicious and chocolatey. With vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, and vitamin D. With niacin, calcium, and iron too, they will drink nutritiously. And you will love the value because Chocolisto gives you great taste and nutrition at a very affordable price. So say goodbye to high prices and say hello to Chocolisto. An affordable nutrition in a tasty drink. Hot as the fans, right place, right price. The government of Dominica, in collaboration with the National Cultural Council, presents the 2014 Independence Celebrations under the theme, Our Nation, Our Responsibility. Be a part of the 36th anniversary celebrations, reconnect with the island's history, dress in the national wear, indulge in Dominica's wide array of Creole delicacies, and participate in the cultural activities across the country. Dominica is all to celebrate the 2014 Independence Celebrations, September 20 to November 4, 2014. Come, let's make it an independence to enjoy and remember. First up on stories for today, a diaspora meeting led by the Dominica Labour Party, DLP government, took place today, Wednesday, with several Dominican diaspora in attendance. Speaking at the meeting, Minister for Trade, Industry and Diaspora Affairs, Dr. John Colin McIntyre, said that the DLP government will support all investment efforts of the diaspora community. The government is currently supporting two local hotel investments through low interest loans. The amount of $1.75 million, $1.75 million, both investments are owned by returning residents. For those of you here today contemplating investment in this country, this government will support all efforts by Dominicans resident overseas who wish to return to invest in this country. Minister McIntyre told those gathered that the Invest Dominica Authority, the Aid Bank and the Diaspora Affairs Unit in the Ministry have collaborated to develop and implement a new diaspora investment strategy and review the current diaspora policy to embrace new initiatives that will encourage investment in the diaspora. Meanwhile, Lauren Bannis, liaison officer responsible for diaspora affairs, said the DLP government has continued to demonstrate its commitment and willingness to embrace overseas nationals. Bannis said this year's independence theme, Our Nation, Our Responsibility, should remind each Dominican to make a positive contribution towards the advancement of the nation. The theme awakens our patriotic spirit and reminds us of the words of our national anthem, Come ye forward, sons and daughters. The Roosevelt Carried Led Administration, therefore, reiterates its position that a Dominican is a Dominican whether he or she resides in Dominica or overseas, and that you are equally entitled to participate and enjoy what is uniquely Dominican. The Commonwealth of Dominica has had a dedicated ministry and staff who deal solely with diaspora affairs for several years now. Not surprising that the number of countries with diaspora institutions has increased in the last 10 years as developing countries become more aware of the potential of overseas nationals to assist in developing these countries. 
And National Youth Rally Coordinator Simeon Joseph says the Ministry of Education is ready for this year's rally, which will take place on Thursday at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium from 9 a.m. In an exclusive interview with 767 News, during the final practice on Wednesday, Joseph said the event forms part of the observance of Dominica's 36th anniversary of independence under the theme, Our Nation, Our Responsibility. Part of tomorrow's program, we'll see several highlights. This year, we want to highlight two main themes in celebration of the overall theme, and that is one. We want to mark the 200th anniversary of the Neg Mawa, and so we have students from the Dominica Community High School, the Pierre Charles Secondary School and the, and the um, Goodway Secondary School will be doing a, a tableau vivant of the Negmawa revolt. Then we also be in recognition of the appeal to beautify Dominica. We will have about 250 primary school students doing a display of Dominica in bloom where they will be forming uh, different shapes and highlighting the different flowers of Dominica. Other aspects of the morning's program include the youth address which will be done by Shannon John of the National Youth Council and the independence awards to outstanding students in academics and sports. Two physically challenged students will receive a special recognition award for excelling exceptionally well academically. As usual, the Prime Minister is expected to take the salute from the students and this year we'll be having some increased drill displays by primary and secondary school students. Normally we would have two, but this year we've had four primary schools and four secondary schools doing their special drill display in commemoration of Dominica's 36th anniversary of independence under the theme our nation, our responsibility. The Youth Rally Coordinator is urging the public to cooperate with the Youth Rally Logistic Officers as often enough members of the public get on in an unruly manner when asked not to sit where the students are required to sit at the stadium. We often find as well that a lot of persons who come to the Youth Rally are somewhat indisciplined. So we're asking everyone coming to the Youth Rally to recognize it is not just a public event, it's an event where young people are present, where students are present and so our behavior and the discipline that we portray needs to be one that is set that sets an example for the young people of this country. Joseph said a large crowd is expected for this year's National Youth Rally. $1,000 have been awarded to the Portsmouth Secondary School, PSS, for securing victory in the first ever secondary school's Quayal choral speech competition. A choral speech competition involves the reciting of a text, poem, or prose by a group of people. The PSS students defeated six other secondary schools to claim that title. The schools were judged based on interpretation, delivery, use of Creole language, stage presence, costume and sound effects, and mastery of peace. The St. Martin Secondary School placed second and was awarded $500, while the Convent High School came in third position and received $300.
the other participating schools include the Casa Bruce Secondary School, Dominica Community High School, the Northeast Comprehensive, and the Piachal Secondary Schools. Although the secondary competition is the first of its kind, Quayal Choral Speech Competitions among primary schools have been ongoing for several years. The Secondary Schools Choral Speech Competition was part of activities which formed part of International Creole Day on Tuesday. The competition was hosted at the Arawak House of Culture on Tuesday, October 28th, and was organized by the committee Pu Etid Quayol, KEK, and the Cultural Division. Chairman of the Independence Committee and member of the committee Puetid Creol, KEK, Raymond Lawrence, has again called for the Creole language to be added to the national school curriculum. At the time, Lawrence was addressing the first ever secondary school's Creole choral speech competition ceremony at the Arawak House of Culture. According to the former chief cultural officer, the Creole language has been a part of the roots of the Dominican culture, forming the basis for many folk songs and music, as well as oral traditions and dances. We must now take it a step further, I believe, into our schools. And this is what we have been attempting to do through Keck with the primary school's Creole spelling B competition and now this secondary school's Creole choral speech competition. We hope that together with the Ministry of Education, we can now begin to build on further inclusion of the Creole language in the national curriculum and give greater exposure and promotion to this beautiful language of ours. Lauren said the various languages that exist in Dominica play an important role in cultural development on the island. Language is a very important part of our culture and our heritage. We speak English in Dominica, we also speak Creole, we speak Kokoi, and we also speak Kalinago. And they are all important languages. The Creole language, which is what we are promoting today, helps us to communicate with our Creole-speaking neighbors, like Guadeloupe and Martinique, and the language is helping us to communicate easier with the Haitians who are here in Dominica. Speaking in agreement with Lawrence, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports, Marcella Powell, noted that it is important to sensitize the public, particularly schools, on the importance of the Creole language. One will agree that we cannot divorce the Creole language from the overall Creole experience of our youth. Hence, students need to appreciate Creole in a manner which is all-inclusive. This year, the committee Pue Tid Quayol introduced for the first time a Quayol Choral Speech Secondary Schools competition as it recognized the need to implement an independence activity that would target secondary schools. When we return, we will bring you the latest results of an election poll released by Barbadian regional political pollster Peter Wickham. Stay with us. When it comes to health and beauty products, nothing beats the skincare, hair care, and beauty products from Lander. For babies, try Lander's baby oil, baby powder, petroleum jelly, and baby shampoo. For the rest of the family, use Lander body lotions and Lander body washes, shampoos and conditioners, which are available in a range of scents. And for spotless and flawless skin, use Lander's vanishing cream. Come into Estefans and select the Lander beauty products to satisfy everyone in your household. Estefans, right place, right price. Introducing the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz has joined with Ashley Furniture, the number one selling home furnishings brand in America, to bring you the most extraordinary furniture selection at unbeatable prices. It's now easier than ever before to find that perfect furniture piece for your home. And what's more, you can add that special touch with the right accent piece from our range of designer accessories from Ashley. Create the perfect look for your home with the Ashley Collection at Quartz. Quartz bringing value home. Visit the new Ashley Gallery at our Roseau store. Ladies, men, and children, are you looking for that unique Creole fashion for this independent season? King's Garments, located on 34 Steber Street in Portersville, and its new location on Independent Street, is the place to shop, especially providing you with all your independence outfits. Your Creole Garments exclusive shop. Vous vous souvenez de pantalon, chemise, waistcoat, petit coat, eh bien, jeep, radouillette, venez dans King's Garments, vous pouvez avoir tout ce que vous avez Go to King's Garments today. 
Welcome back to 767 News. The Discover Dominica Authority, DDA, says it will continue to advocate for vendors to sell authentic Dominican craft items as this is very important for Dominica's tourist industry. Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, spoke to this in an interview with 767 News on the commencement of the 2014-2015 tourist season on Tuesday. We continue to talk to the vendors about um, um, selling authentic Dominican craft, but we understand the economics of things. Um, we have done a lot of training with the Calinago this year to try to get them to, very, to have some variety in their designs, to have some variety in the size of things that they produce. Piper said the DDA is also working with the Dominica Association of Craft Producers, DACPA, so they fully understand the need for authentic Dominican craft. He explained, however, that the vendors are private entities who have to ensure profitability. And so they look at the cost of their product, they look at uh, the variety, they look at all the things that would allow them to make a sale so that they can um, provide for their families. So we just try to provide technical assistance, but as to what the vendors who are private entity choose to purchase and sell, uh, at this point in time there is no law or statute that, that mandates. Dominica has been affected by the sale of craft items as numerous vendors have been placing Made in Dominica stamps on Chinese produced craft items which tourists can purchase in other islands before arriving to Dominica. The vendors argue that the locally made craft items are expensive and seek cheaper options. The United Workers' Party, UWP, is urging the Dominica diaspora not to accept bribes to vote at the upcoming next general elections, which is constitutionally due by March of 2015. During a press conference on Monday, leader of the United Workers' Party, Lennox Linton, said there are some who will come to vote for the Dominica Labour Party, then return overseas to what he described as milk and honey lifestyles when Dominicans are experiencing hardship under this regime. Our business is honest engagement. Huh? Our business is honest engagement, which we have been involved in for the better part of the last year. You remember, we took the time to go out to North America, and we were in Europe, and we were in the Northern Islands of the Caribbean. We focused a lot on countries where there are major settlements of Dominicans living, and, and we, we sought to take the message of Dominica to our brothers and sisters in those locations. Essentially, given a situation analysis where the economy was, what was happening with the distribution of social services, all of the quality of governance and so on, we did that. And also took the opportunity to present our vision, our plan for a better Dominica, and a plan for ensuring that better days come to Dominica. He said as a result of this honest engagement with the Dominica diaspora, the enthusiasm in allegedly receiving a plane ticket from the Dominica Labour Party to vote for them is not as high as it was in 2009. The UWP leader revealed that they have been receiving positive reviews from persons who will travel to Dominica using their own resources to vote for the United Workers' Party. And even some of them who will be taking tickets from the Scarlet Cabal are indicating that they will be voting for us as well. So we, we're, not, we're not too concerned about that, except that we want to warn the people of Dominica that politicians paying for airline tickets for them to come down to vote in this election amounts to an act of bribery within the, within the meaning of the House of Assembly Elections Act of Dominica. And so we'd like to, as we have done in the past, encourage people away from doing that. Now, you, you don't bribe somebody who you give money but doesn't do what they want you to do. That's not bribery. So if, if they come down and they don't vote for the Labour Party, that will not be bri bri bribery. And um, <laughs> <laughs> we are encouraging them, we're encouraging them in, that, in, that, in that regard. But the, 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 point, the point is, though, that Dominica has to find a way to move away from this sort of activity. He added, Dominica has to find a way for the true essence of democracy, which must be based on the right principles, including free and fair and free from fear elections. Linton added, this is lacking, especially in this current political landscape. However, under United Workers' Party government, free and fair elections will be guaranteed. 
And the public opinion election poll conducted by Barbadian regional political pollster Peter Wickham has revealed that the Dominica Labour Party, DLP, may be victorious in the upcoming election. The poll was conducted from the 17th to the 20th of October 2014. As far as actual party support is concerned, uh, what we found was that 43% of respondents indicated that they will vote for the Dominica Labour Party, while 30% promised to support the UWP. 13% uh, of respondents said they were unsure which party they would support, and 14% refused to tell us who they will vote for. This is, of course, a situation where people say, we know who we will vote for, but we just won't tell you. This is the third election tenure in which Caribbean Development Research Services, Cadres, has conducted such a poll in Dominica. Wickham said one of the most significant observations in this year's result is the national swing. The national swing. National swing is a figure that is generated by cadres is an estimation based on the change in party support between the last election and this election. Of course, we estimate this election. The last election is a matter of public record. Um, what we're seeing is that at this time, there has been a swing of minus two percentage points away from the Dominican Labour Party and a swing of four percentage points towards the United Workers Party. The political poster said the swing estimation used relies on historical data. According to Wickham, he is not surprised at the reduction in party supporters for the Dominica Labour Party. What has happened in Dominica over the last two elections is that the Dominica Labour Party has actually increased its support on each occasion it went to the election, <laughs> which is quite frankly something that has not happened anywhere else in the Caribbean in recent times. Uh, it's a significant development. It would appear as though that on this current trajectory, that increase has been arrested. Uh, I would tell you that I would have been a bit surprised if it had continued to increase because already the fact that it has increased on three occasions is, is significant and has created electoral history in the Caribbean. As it relates to the public's opinion on its preferred leader, on average 6.4% went with Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, while 4.7% favoured opposition leader Lennox Linton. These figures do not include uncertain voters. And as if this wasn't enough, economist and candidate for the Grand Four constituency on a United Workers' Party ticket in the upcoming general elections, Dr. Thompson Fontaine, is not frazzled by the results of an election poll released by Barbadian regional political pollster Peter Wickham on Wednesday, which suggests that the Dominica Labour Party will be victorious at the next general election. Pontin told 767 News on Wednesday that Peter Wickham, who has been conducting polls for the DLP over the years, lacks credibility as several polls previously done by him in the Caribbean has been grossly inaccurate. Well, we have news from Mr. Wickham and the Dominican Labour Party. Our own internal polling has shown that the United Workers' Party is well ahead of the Dominican Labour Party. And also, Mr. Peter Wickham lacks credibility as far as the conducting of polls are concerned. He got it wrong, for example, in Grenada when he called the election for Thomas Tillman and the opposition won with a complete landslide. He got it wrong in Barbados and again in Antigua. So <laughs> there's no reason to believe that he will get it right in Dominica. But more importantly, I believe, is the fact that Mr. Peter Wickham has been polling internally for the Dominica Labour Party. So I don't think it is right for him to now parade himself as an independent, fair pollster when he's been doing that consistently over many years for the Dominica Labour Party. So obviously, the, as they say, the, the, the person who pays the piper calls the tune. And I believe that he's working for the Dominica Labour Party. And whatever he says this afternoon must be taken with that in mind. Fontaine, in response to Wickham's election prediction poll, said results of an internal poll conducted in 12 constituencies by the United Workers' Party, UWP, earlier this month, has revealed that the United Workers' Party is ahead of the ruling DLP. It's revealing that we are well ahead in several. We did the poll in 12 constituencies um, that was conducted in October. We excluded uh, Salisbury, Maricot, and Wesley, but it, it was done in the constituencies of Grand Fawn, Cassibrus, La Plaine, Roseau North, Roseau South, Roseau Central, Roseau Valley, Soufriere, Maho, St. Joseph, and Colihu. And um, what it shows is that we're well ahead, and of course Sally Bear, sorry, Sally Bear at the 12th. It showed that we're well ahead in all of them. There was only one constituency where it showed the Labour Party had a decided edge over Team Dominica. Um, as I said, it was for internal purposes. 
and we, most of what we got out of that survey is for our own internal use as far as the percentages and all the rest of it. But we can let the Dominican public know that it looks very well for the for Team Dominica. And it's also consistent with what people are sensing generally. While general elections in Dominica are constitutionally due in May of next year, there has been widespread speculation among the populace that it will be called before the end of 2014. The United Workers' Party has said it is ready for elections whenever it is called. The UWP reports that it has been able to amass impressive support from the population in recent months, and this will be evidenced when the general elections are called. The latest in sports news is coming up next with Larry, so stay tuned. Say hello to the Digicel DL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4-inch display, front-facing camera, and a 5-megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast, so you can play more, do more, and listen more. And choose to download from over a million apps in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest edition in the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Digicel. I made a stupid mistake. See where it's now landed me. My baby's now behind bars. Feels forgotten by society. It's time for us to make a change. Make a change. To the now justice reform project. All of us make a change. Make a change. Instead of incarceration, y'all, let's try diversion. Reform, rehabilitation. Our youth needs a second chance beyond bars. bars. A world that accepts them with open, open arms. arms. It's nice to know that you're here. Just know that we care. This time. We'll do our part. Let's all make a fresh start. It's time for us to make a change. All of us make a change. To the now justice reform project. All of us make a change. Make a change. The Juvenile Justice Reform Project, a new path to changing lives for good. Funded by USAID and the OECS Secretariat. Good evening and welcome to 767 Sports. We begin tonight's coverage of football. Action continuing the sports division organized secondary school's football championship on Wednesday with six matches. At Grand Bay, it was Pierchal Secondary School versus Goodwill Secondary School in the under 15 and under 20 categories. At Portsmouth, it was a Portsmouth Secondary School versus the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School in the under 15 and under 20 categories. Meanwhile, at Cassie Bruce, the Cassie Bruce Secondary School played the Northeast Comprehensive School in an under-15 match, whilst at Portersville, the St. Mary's Academy took on the St. John's Academy in an under-15 match. Matches will then continue after the independence break on November 6. And in cricket, the West Indies Cricket Board has announced the West Indies A 50-over squad for the series against Sri Lanka A. The 14-man squad is as follows. Carlos Brathwaite, captain. Sunil Ambris. Ronsford Beaton, Jermaine Blackwood, Nakruma Buna, Craig Brathwaite, Jonathan Carter, Miguel Cummins, Andre Fletcher, Asad Fudadin, Shannon Gabriel, Nikita Miller, Ashley Ness, and Chadwick Walton. West Indies A and Sri Lanka A will play three matches on November 1st, 3rd, and 5th. The ODI series was preceded by the free test series which Sri Lanka A leads 1-0 with one match remaining. Sri Lanka A won the first test by 10 wickets, while the second and third test was drawn. That's it for tonight's sportscast. That was Larry with the latest in sports. As part of Financial Information Month in October, 767 News, in collaboration with the local ECCB office, is offering a month of financial tips. Money may not buy your love, but fighting about it will surely bankrupt your relationship. Before you venture into a marital relationship, fix your finances. Too many couples start off their married life with a large amount of debt. That's a lot of pressure on a new marital relationship. And that was your financial tip for today. That's all for now. Drop us an email, friend us on Facebook, and be sure to like our 767 News page. From all of us on the 767 News production team, I'm Alicia George. Thanks for watching.